welcome back everyone. So, uh, let us recall where we were, we were trying to solve a linear quadratic uh, system, a system of, of this of this particular form here where we were get with where this state evolved in a linear fashion like this and we had a quadratic cost to minimize and the observations we were getting at each time were a linear function of the state corrupted by noise. And what we uh, the information that we had at each time step were all the observations so far and the actions taken so far and we were trying to minimize uh, this this uh, this cost by uh, with respect to policies where the policy at time k mu k was chosen as a function of i k alone. Now, we were doing this uh, we were we were applying the uh, dynamic programming algorithm for this and we did this for time step n minus 1 and we discovered an, um, an amazing fact that the optimal policy actually the optimal policy mu mu n minus 1 star at time step n minus 1 is the same as the policy optimal policy for the perfect state information case. So, this policy is the exactly the same policy you would have got had you assumed that there was that, that you had perfect uh, state information, but the policy has to be applied not on the state itself since we do not have that information, but rather on the conditional expectation of the state given the information. So, the policy has to be applied on, on this particular best estimate of our of the state at that time. Right. So, the optimal policy uh, is the same as the po optimal policy with the with perfect state information, but with the state information replaced by the conditional mean of the state given the information. All right. So, this gave us therefore, uh, a, an expression for uh, j n minus 1. Now, j n minus 1 uh, at i n uh, as a function of i n minus 1, this also looked rather similar to this uh, to the perfect information case because you, you had a quadratic term here which was precisely the term we had seen earlier. We had this this constant term uh, which was floating around because of the noise in the system, the system noise and but we also got an additional term here and this additional term is what makes this problem different from this uh, perfect state information problem. That we notice that this additional term actually depends on this estimation error. It depends on how far x n minus 1 which is the true state is from our best estimate of the state which is the conditional expectation of the state given uh, given the information. So, it depends on uh, depends on this this term. So, you can actually see it is the it is it is this error multiplied by a weighting matrix p n minus 1 times the error again. So, it is something like a mean square error, but a weighted mean square error. So, this this term also appears in our uh, in our uh, in in j n uh, in j n minus 1 of i n minus 1. All right. Now, let us uh, uh, let uh, we then went to time step n minus 2 and which is where we uh, which is where we sort of stopped in the previous in the previous lecture. So, when we wrote this uh, the dynamic programming equation out for for time step n minus 2, we had a minimization over u n minus 2 outside and a conditional expectation with respect to all the noise that is left in the problem after conditioning on i n minus 2 and u n minus 2. Now, notice that uh, all the noise that is left is x n minus 2 which is the state that we do not know the noise system noise w n minus 2 and the new observation z n minus 1 that we uh, that is not included in i n minus 2, but included in i n minus 1 right. So, this uh, this this new this is this is the ex the expectation is taken with respect to this. So, I realize that in when I wrote this out last time I have actually not written out all three of these. So, let me uh, let, let us pr proceed with the understanding that when I write the expectation the expectation is really over all of these all these all these elements ok. So, so ignore this part for the moment. Now, what we uh, now let us let us analyze this in in depth a little bit. So, your we we now have a minimization outside and inside there is an there are several expectations that have been taken. So, here is the minimization and then here they have expectations and so on. What we need to understand now is which of these terms actually depend on u n minus 2. So, that we can then take uh, find the minimum with respect to uh, uh, of, of those terms uh, with respect to u n minus 2. So, the first observation here is as far as the, the first term is concerned which is which is this one here 
this actually does not depend uh, this does not depend on on uh, un minus 2 at all the 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 uh, the reason is because this depends on the state xn minus 2 uh, it's, it's a conditional expectation of the state even uh, xn minus 2 given in minus 2 so there is no dependence of un minus 2 in this particular in this particular term here so this un minus xn minus 2 is the state at time n minus 2 which is when you take action n minus 2 and all the information that we have about that state is already encompassed in i n minus 2. We, so, this this actually does not depend on this uh, does not depend on u n minus 2. This term here does depend on u n minus 2 this is so let me underline this term this term does depend on on u n minus 2 here this one depends on u n minus 2. The uh, the last term here also depends on u n minus 2. Uh, the reason it depends on u n minus 2 is because the, uh, the, the x n minus 1 which is the state at the next time step depends on u n minus 2. So, this depends on u n minus 2, x n minus 2 uh, and w n minus 2 and so on. So, all, so, so, in, so, somewhere hidden in this is actually u n minus 2. So, this also depends on u n minus 2. The last term here which is a constant term this actually does not depend on u n minus 2 and that is self evident because this, this is really a, 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 a depends only on the statistics of the noise. We have finally then this term left and the question here is, is does this term depend on u n minus 2. Now if this term depended on u n minus 2 then the problem remember this term is the additional term that we got in this problem because because we had imperfect state information this term was not there when we had perfect state information so if this term somehow turned out to be independent of un minus 2 right so let me underline this term with a different color so if this term turned out to be independent of un minus 2 then things would be very nice because then the entire logic would would proceed almost in precisely the same way as it would for the perfect state information case because in the perfect state information case you had precise you had exactly these two yellow or underlined terms so we could then just piggyback on the results that we've already derived for the perfect state information case and then and and compute the optimal policy from there so the hope then is to somehow establish that this is u n minus 2 uh, independent of u n minus 2. Now, why would this be independent of u n minus 2? So, let us try to think about this intuitively a little bit. So, what is this uh, what is this term really? It, this term is actually the diff the is is capturing for us the error bet between the state and your best estimate of the state right. So, it is it is essentially the residual uncertainty that is left after you have estimated the state using the information that you have the residual uncertainty in, in the state that is left after you have uh, after you have taken the best estimate you could using the information that is left. Now, what, what we need to argue is that this this here is independent of the uh, independent of uh, is uh, is that, the, that, that this becomes independent of u n minus 2. Now, why would this become independent of u n minus 2? Well, it would become independent of u n minus 2 if if you know the residual uncertainty that is left at the uh, after we have uh, taken the best estimate if that residual uncertainty is really the intrinsic uncertainty in the problem which is driven by the noise of the problem. So, if the residual uncertainty is all a function of the noise of the problem then we could really then we have the result as we are looking for which is that then this term would become a function of just the noise and the choice of the control action and the control policy would be irrelevant. So, this is exactly what we will now we will now establish. So, what we will establish now is the following lemma. So, here is a lemma for every k there is a function m k such that
we have x k minus conditional expectation of x k given i k is a function m k of the following variables which are just the noise in the system. So, x 0 w 0 to w k v 0 to v k independently and the function itself is independent of the policy used independently of the policy used. This is what we will show all right. So, here is the proof for this. So, in order to do this what we will do is we will construct actually two systems. The first system is the one we already have which is being driven by the control that we are some control policy that has been chosen and then another system which is uncontrolled, but powered by the same noise uh, the same noise as as uh, as in the original system. So, here is our original system. So, so first let us fix a policy and consider consider these two systems ok. So, first is your original system which is x k plus 1 equal to a k x k plus b k u k plus w k and we get observation z k equal to c k c k x k plus b k. The second system is x k bar which is the system state is denoted by x k bar. So, x k bar x k plus 1 bar equals a k x bar k plus b k. So, sorry plus w bar k. So, there is no not there is there, there is no control in this it's a, you can think that control is 0 or some nominal control has been applied in a basically so, uh, there is no the, the control term is absent right. And z k bar is the observation that we get of this particular system which is c k x k bar plus v k bar. Now, how are these w k's and w v k uh, w k bar and v k and v k bar uh, related. Uh, we will assume that w k is equal to w k bar and v k is equal to v k bar. This is true for all k ok k equal to 0 to n minus 1. We will also assume that the systems are initiated with the same uh, initial conditions. So, x 0 is equal to x 0 bar. Right. So, now let us uh, let us consider the vectors z k z k is is this column vector I will uh, let me write this as a column vector for your convenience z 0 to z k this is the observation vector of all the observations um, till time k z k bar is an observation vector of all the observations of the second system up until time k w k is uh, w k is equal to uh, w 0 to w k v k is similarly v 0 till v k and u k capital U k is the control actions u 0 to u k. Now, because these two states uh, states uh, these two systems are linear we can substitute for uh, using the state equation of the respective system in uh, uh, at each time step and back substitute and, and so you can substitute for x k in terms of x k minus 1 x k minus 1 in terms of x k minus 2 and so on. And similarly for the second system uh, using this we will be able to conclude we can say that x k is actually a linear function of so let me write this on the next page. So, we will be able to conclude that x k is equal to f k some f k x 0 plus g k 
u k my u k minus 1 plus some h k times w k minus 1 and similarly x bar k is equal to now x bar k would also be equal to f k x 0 plus h k w k minus 1. Now, how did I get this? Well, when I substitute back x k in terms of x k minus 1, x k minus 1 in terms of x k minus 2 and so on, eventually what I will be left with is a vector of uh, eventually the x's will get substituted in terms of x 0 and the control action so far and the noise so far. So, what is going to happen is I will get something that is a linear function of the initial state the entire history of control actions that is u k u k minus 1 and the entire history of the noise so far which would be w k minus 1. And exactly the same uh, coefficients will occur even in the system in the in the second system the one with without the control the, and the, the reason for that is because the system constants are all the same the, the you still have uh, the a k here you still have c k here um, uh, so you still have a k here and uh, when you keep substituting back the dependence on x 0 will remain would, would be the same. So, and similarly the dependence on w's, w's as well. Then using that w k is equal to w bar k you will be able to eventually write something like this. So, these therefore, this is how uh, we can re represent the state state of the system in at uh, state of either system it at time k right. Now, uh, uh, the uh, let us let us make a few observations based on this. So, first observation uh, we have that let us look at our control vector u k minus 1. So, u, u k minus 1 see u k minus 1 remember was equal to this vector which is u 0 till u k minus 1 the vector of control actions and this is present as a in is present in in i k. Remember because when you are taking uh, the information we have all the observations so far and all the actions taken so far. So, this is present in our uh, in in our information ok. So, in other words therefore, if I take the conditional expectation of u k minus 1 given i k this conditional expectation is simply u k minus 1 itself all right. So, this is uh, we have this particular property. So, now what we will do is we will take conditional expectations on both of these equations that have been written here. We will take conditional expectation with respect to i k in both of these and so we have the conditional expectation of x k given i k equals f k times conditional expectation of x 0 given i k plus now remember the conditional expectation of uk minus 1 given ik is just uk minus 1 so that will come out of the that comes out of the conditional expectation so it's dk times uk minus 1 plus hk times i am taking the condition i need a conditional expectation of wk minus 1 given ik and similarly i have a simil another equation like this for the second system Remember in the second system also I am taking conditional expectation with respect to i k not I am not uh, with so which is the information of the first system all right. So, it is still this so it is still f k given f k times expectation of x 0 given i k plus h k times expectation of uh, I, I should write this properly this is a capital W capital W k minus 1 given i k. Now, we can subtract the 2 and when we subtract the 2 we get uh, no, we, we see that there are uh, we can actually yeah. So, so the thing to notice here is that the, the f k here is the same as the f k here all three f k's all of these four f k's are the same uh, all of these the these two g k's are the same and similarly these three h's are this these four h's are the same 
this is because of the linearity of the underlying system right. So, what we will do now is subtract we will let us look at the subtraction of x k minus this minus the best estimate of x k given given the information. Remember we this is what we wanted to show we wanted to show that we wanted to show that this this the, the same quantity x k minus the conditional expectation of x k given i k is in is a function of just the noise independently of the policy used right. So, we let us let us see what happens when I subtract x k from this what would happen is uh, your x 0 will get subtracted from expectation of x 0 given i k w k will get subtracted from expectation of w k given i k. So, and and this term the, the yellow underlying terms will actually get cancelled because they are the u k minus 1 is uh, times g k is present in both. So, what we will be what we will be left with is actually the same as what you would get if you subtracted x k bar from expectation of x k bar given i k ok. So, so if you subtract this this equation here from this equation that is exactly what you would get. So, in other words you can show you can observe that this is in fact equal to x k bar minus the conditional expectation of x k bar given i k all right. So, we so far so good. So, we have what have we shown here we have seen that the 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 error the estimation error that means that the residual uncertainty that as I was calling it between the state and the, uh, the uh, my uh, uh, and the best estimate of the state given the information that residual uncertainty is equal to the residual uncertainty that you would have in the uncontrolled system. Now, does this actually show that this, uh, this residual uncertainty therefore is independent of the control? The answer is no because if you see here this, this residual uncertainty the, there is a the control actually we are taking the conditional expectation here with respect to i k which is the information of the control system. And the information of the control system uh, uh, does depend on the control actions and the control policy that you have uh, that you have chosen. So there is possible there is still uh, this hidden here. Okay, the u the the u the u k is actually hidden here. So one has to be careful here. So this is not automatically independent of the control action. We need to uh, you know argue a little more in order to do this, in order to say that. So now in order now in order to say this, let's let's also now go back to our z's. So z's remember the the, the z equation here that's that's out here this and this they can also be written in terms of all the noise in the system. So what I can do is I can substitute all the x's using the state equation in the z equation. I can substitute the x bars using the state equation of the second system into this observation equation. And then eventually I will get something that is a linear function of the observation noise, the system noise and the initial state right. And of course, but, but in the uh, this would have, but in, in the case of the, in the case of the, uh, uh, the, the system, uh, the, the, in the case of the observations for the, uh, for the control system, the, the control will also be present over there. Whereas, for the observations of the uncontrolled system the, there will be no presence of control. So, we would again just like we had for this estimation error we would have something similar for z as well which would which is this identity we would have that z bar k is, is equal to actually z k minus some matrix uh, let us call this n k times u k minus 1. And this difference, this difference is basically the difference between the observations that you have uh, uh, the it is essentially what it is saying is that if you if you take the observations of the uh, of the control system they are equal to the obs they, they are equal to a linear function of the control actions plus the observ and the observations that you would have from the uncontrolled system. Because the observations that the, all the contribution of the noise is already captured in z bar k. So, this is therefore equal to this. In fact, this difference is actually some a function of just the capital W k and capital V k. In fact, we can write this as some S k times W k minus 1 plus T k times V k. Uh, 
as as you can as you can see here all right so so this is how we can express this now uh, in other in other words we can we can also play uh, play around with this in a, in a slightly different way we can write this as zk is is therefore equal to uh, nk uk minus 1 plus sk wk minus 1 plus tk vk this is what the information this is this is this is the capital zk all right fine so now let's come back to the term that we were looking we were concentrating on which is xk bar minus the conditional expectation of xk bar given ik so this 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 term here so let us let's look at this term so this so in particular let's look at this this part here xk bar given ik now what is what is ik really ik ik itself is actually just zk and comma uk minus 1 so it's all the observations and all the and the actions taken so far right but zk itself so but given uk minus 1 so you are uk minus 1 is present in 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 ik right so when so given zk and uk minus 1 you can reconstruct z bar k right so therefore this is actually nothing but z bar k comma u k minus 1. So, why is the why are these equal? Well, these are equal because given the u k minus 1 and given if you are given u k minus 1 and z k you can construct back from there you can construct z bar k from there and given the z bar k and u k minus 1 you can reconstruct z k from there. So, being given z bar k and u k minus 1 is equivalent to being given z z k and u uh, k minus 1. So, the information content in the pair z k comma u k minus 1 is the same as the information content in z bar k comma u k minus 1 ok. Technically the sigma algebra is generated by these two are the are the same. So, as a consequence of this we uh, we, we now have that this conditional expectation here of x bar k given i k this conditional expectation is simply the conditional expectation of x bar k given z bar k comma u k minus 1. So, now let us let us let us see what uh, what this basically says. So, this term here the, the u k minus 1 is the control actions that we applied on the state of the uh, of the control system z bar k are the observations that you are getting of the uncontrolled system. So, the control actions that you applied on the of the on the control system only give you information about the control system. It does not give any further information to us about the uncontrolled system. So, there is nothing further to be learned about x bar k from from z bar k and u bar k than can be learned directly from z bar k itself. So, in other words u k minus 1 does not provide us any further information about x bar k minus 1 because after all it is an act control action applied on the on another system. So, all that we could uh, all that there is to be learned from here uh, about this particular system is there in uh, in z bar k once you are given that right. So, as a consequence of this this is actually equal to conditional expectation of x bar k given z bar k. So, this this becomes our our main observation and why did we get this? We got this because there was this nice linearity between z bar k and z k. Now, let us come back here. So, what is z bar k? Well, z bar k is a function of just just these it is a function of the uh, uh, of the system noise and the observation noise. So, as a result of this this is therefore, a function a function m k of just the initial conditions and the noise in the system and this is the this is irrespective of the policy used because the choice of uk minus 1 was independent was immaterial here. So, as a result of this we have concluded that 
that a conditional expectation of x bar k given i k minus 1 is a function of just this and independently of the policy used. So, this therefore helps us prove the, the, the lemma that we wanted. So, we will now use this particular lemma in the uh, in our next lecture to, uh, to complete the calculations of the dynamic programming uh, uh, dynamic programming algorithm applied to the problem with imperfect state information.